Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another lecture on tool and die design. We are on module 4 that is design of inspection tooling and in lecture 4-2 we will discuss design of limit gauges. At the end of this lecture you should be able to understand the basic motivation behind the use of limit gauges. What is the basic purpose of using limit gauges? You should be able to differentiate among the basic types of limit gauges. So we have uh, plug gauges, we are having ring gauges, and we have snap gauges. You should be able to understand the purpose of and difference between a go gauge and a no go gauge. And the most important learning objective is to use Taylor's theory of gauging to design limit gauges. And finally, you should be able to properly apply tolerance and wear allowance in the design of gauges. Limit gauges determine whether or not the workpiece is within acceptable dimensional limits. So they give us information on whether the upper and lower limit is violated or not. So we have discussed the concept of limits and tolerance in detail in one of the previous lectures. So these gauges do not attempt to determine the value of a dimension. So they are something like a yes, no type of inspection tooling. And they give us information on whether the upper and lower limit is violated or not. So they are also called attribute gauges because they provide us qualitative information about the conformance uh, of a part. And they do not determine the value of a dimension. So these limit gauges are an example of inspection tooling that checks dimensional conformance. In the next lecture, we will discuss the inspection tooling that checks geometric conformance. So we are focusing on this type of inspection tooling in this lecture, uh, that is uh, the limit gauges. There are different ways to classify limit gauges. One of the ways is to classify them based on where they are used. So we are having working gauges, inspection gauges, and master gauges. Working gauges are those which are used during production on the machine. So they are used on the shop floor to check the conformance of the parts as they are being made. Then we have inspection gauges. And these are the gauges used by the manufacturing company or customer when checking work pieces received from the production department. So they are having more specific use as compared to working gauges. And then we, have, we are having master gauges. They are very accurately made gauges. They are used to check uh, or set the two types of gauges mentioned above. That is the working gauges and inspection gauges. In other words, these gauges are used to uh, calibrate working gauges and inspection gauges. So they are used for calibration of other gauges. So the tolerance applied to master gauges is much tighter than applied to the working gauges and inspection gauges. In this lecture, we are basically focusing on the design of working gauges. Now, based on the uh, dimension that, be, that is being checked, the limit gauges can be classified as plug gauges, the ring gauges, and snap gauges. Plug gauges are used to check internal dimensions, like the diameter of a hole. Now, these plug gauges uh, may have different uh, uh, shapes. So we, we can have, for example, single-ended plug gauges, we can have progressive uh, plug gauges, we can have double-ended uh, plug gauges. So we will see the difference between these you know, different shapes uh, in one of the following slides. In plug gauges, the go gauge is generally larger than the no-go gauge, so that it may be distinguished from the other visually and also to check other features. So we will see this part in detail uh, in one of the following slides as well. So the basic idea is that the plug gauge is used to check some internal dimension, just like the diameter of a hole. 
And the limit should be applied to this plug gauge such that uh, it checks both. It checks the upper limit and lower limit as well. So actually we are having the two parts of the gauge. One checks conformance to upper limit and the other checks conformance to lower limit. And the tolerance applied to this gauge should be such that, uh, that this tolerance is within the tolerance of the workpiece. And we will come back to this point once we discuss uh, Taylor's theory of gauge. Then we are having ring gauges. They are used to check external dimensions, like the diameter of a shaft. So if this is our workpiece, so we can have a ring gauge, something like this. So that will have a hole. And actually, just like plug gauge, it will have two parts, one to check the uh, conformance to the lower limit and the other to check the conformance to the upper limit. And of course, we will discuss this point in much detail as we move on uh, in this lecture. Another type of gauge that checks external dimensions is a snap gauge. And practically, snap gauges are more commonly used than the ring gauges. So snap gauges have a C-frame construction, just like the one shown. They may be set or adjusted to within the limits of their construction. So this snap gauge is adjustable snap gauge. It is used to check diameters, thicknesses, or lengths. It is very difficult to use ring gauge actually to check some of the external dimensions, just like thickness. But in, in this case, the snap gauge is much easier to use. The figure shows a commercial snap gauge uh, which, uses, which uses four precision pins. Uh, now, the first two actually are uh, the go part of the gauge and the other pair is the no-go part of the gauge. So these two are actually the go part. So the first uh, two which engage the workpiece are set to the uh, largest dimension and it is labeled as the go gauge. The second set, which does not allow the workpiece to pass, is set to the smallest dimension or the low limit, and it is labeled the no-go gauge. So this pair is the uh, no-go uh, part of the gauge. So you could see that uh, this gap actually, that is uh, the go part, is having larger size, that is in this case 1.002 than this no-go side that is having a size of 0.998. And we will discuss it, how this size is specified. So here is another example uh, of a snap gauge, the one shown on the previous slide, as well as this one. Both are examples of progressive snap gauge because we are having the go and no-go side on the um, on the same side of the gauge. So the upper limit is 1.002 inches that will reject all work pieces larger than 1.002. So again, the first pair of jaws is uh, the go side of the gauge. So this side. The low limit is 0.998 inches and therefore the work piece is smaller than 0.998 inches will be rejected. So this part is the no-go or not-go side. And you could see that this is slightly smaller than the go side. So it is having a size of 0.998. And of course, some limits are applied to these sizes that we are not discussing at the moment. So the low limit is 0.998 inches and therefore the work is smaller than 0.998 will be rejected. Now, work pieces which have dimensions between 1.002 and 0.998 inches will be accepted by the go portion. So, such pieces will pass through the go side of the gauge and stop at the no go 
side of the gauge. So that is how their names are actually uh, um, specified. So go site should let a conforming word piece pass and not go site should not let a conforming piece pass through it. So here are the examples of uh, some of these types of limit gauges. So these two are both plug gauges, but this one is double-ended plug gauge because we are having go and no go at the opposite, uh, opposite ends of the cylinder. So this is the go side and this is the no go or not go side. And you could notice that the length of the go is larger than length of the no go uh, side. And we will see its purpose in uh, one of the following uh, uh, segments. And this one shown here is progressive plug gauge. Because both go and no go are on the same side of the cylinder. So this much is the go side. And this is no go. And you could again notice that the length of the go side is larger than the no go. But both are used to check internal dimension, in this case, the diameter of a hole. This is also a plug gauge, but this is here called a pin gauge. So it is used to check the diameter of very small holes. And this one is the thread plug gauge. So this is also a plug gauge, but it checks the conformance of internal threads. So the purpose of all these plug gauges, whether they are uh, these plain plug gauges or we are having thread plug gauge, their purpose is to check some internal feature, but depending upon the shape of the feature, of course, the design of gauge varies. So this is the go side and this is the no go side. And once again, I repeat that this is used to check the conformance of uh, internal thread. Then we are having uh, some gauges that are used to check external features. So we are having this uh, plain uh, ring gauge. So it will check, uh, for example, the diameter of a shaft. So you could notice that we are having uh, two, two diameters of this ring gauge. So this one is basically the go and this one is the no go uh, part of this gauge. Similarly, we are having a snap gauge that is also used to check external dimensions like diameter, the length or thickness. And you could notice here this go side and this uh, no go side as well. And this specific gauge is adjustable snap gauge. So you, you are having these screws uh, that can be used to uh, adjust the size of this gauge. So it can be used for checking more than one sizes. Then we are having adjustable thread ring gauge, so sort of counterpart of this thread plug gauge. The thread plug gauge was used to check uh, the conformance of internal threads and thread ring gauge will be used to check the conformance of external threads. So here is an illustration uh, on the use of a plain plug gauge. So this is a double-ended plug gauge. So you could notice this is the go side and this is the no go side. Go side has larger length than the no go side. And the range of size that this gauge can check is 11.86 to 12.12. So the lower limit of the hole and this is the upper limit of the hole. So if the 
uh, diameter of the hole is within these limits, then go side should pass through the hole and the no go side should not pass. So that will be a conforming part. So the hole will be within limits. So you could see that the go side is passing through the hole. So that means that the lower limit is not violated. That is the limit of 11.86 is not violated. So similarly, the no go side of the gate should not pass. So that shows that the upper limit of 12.12 is not valid. So this hole is within allowed limits of 11.86 and 12.12. So uh, this is how these gauges are used. 